with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. It says here, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10, For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted. So, obviously, you're going to feel bad about things that you've done wrong. I'm not saying that God doesn't care what you did wrong. There is a process to go through when you make mistakes. All of us have mistakes. This message today is not for people that haven't done anything in their life to be regretted. It's for people that have. The, but the point is, when you walk with God and you work with God, there's a process you can go through and not regret the past. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. In other words, when you see what you've done and you recognize what you've done and you go to God and repent of it, He wants you not to regret it anymore. And he can't make you do that. He can forgive you, and he can cleanse you, and he can pay the price, but he can't stop you from the way you react to your own past. So there's a godly sorrow that leads to repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. So I want to apply this teaching to things that cause us to continue to sorrow. Things in our past that we just can't seem to forget and we can't seem to get over and every thought of it brings sadness and sorrow. That's not God's will for your life. Godly sorrow leads to repentance not to be regretted. There's not, doesn't have to be regret connected to your past if you apply the principles of God's word. Regret is a feeling of sorrow or remorse for a fault, an act, a loss, or a disappointment. Let me make these two statements. No matter how much you've done right, how perfect you may be, Satan wants you to regret your past. I don't care how good you've lived your life, Satan wants you to find something to be sorry over. And on the other hand, no matter how much you've done wrong and how little you've done right, Jesus can set you free from regret. So this covers everybody. I don't care what a, what a big mess you think you've made of the past. You see, I mean, there are people of all different backgrounds. There are people who didn't get saved until late in life, and they regret that. There are other people that got saved early, and every mistake they've made has been while they're a Christian, and they regret that. And there are some people that missed opportunities that could have and would have and should have, but they didn't, and they regret that. Other people have, have done things that they shouldn't have done, and they regret that. They're, listen, life is ugly. Things happen. Things go wrong. But Jesus came to make it right, and he did what he came to do, and you can apply it to your life. So what we're doing is very simple. We've applied, if you're a Christian, you've applied the Word of God to your spirit, and you've received Jesus, and you're born again. How many of you could say amen to that? And, and you believe, I'm, I think we all believe in divine healing, that, that, that Jesus, by his stripes, were healed. There's healing for our bodies. How many of you believe that? Well, there's also this part in between that we call the soul, the mind, will, and emotions. That, too, can be damaged, and that's where regret is. That's where sadness and sorrow exist. We can apply the redemption that Jesus purchased for us to the soul and get free from regrets as well. Just like you got forgiven of sins, just like maybe you've been healed in your body, you can be set free in your soul and you can be happy again. You ought to be so glad that I came all this way and my job here today is to make you happy. Yes. I'm kind of glad about that myself. A few weeks ago I was preaching on hell. That's no fun. <laughs> I'm glad I moved on. Go to Revelation 21. I want to just go to the, I call this the, the punchline. This is kind of the, 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 the main seed for these messages. Revelation 21.
And, and the, the, this, this is when we go to heaven. How many of you know you're going to heaven? That's something to be happy about. We're going to get new bodies, and God's going to send the devil to the lake of fire forever, and we're going to be living with God in his very presence forever and ever and ever. Amen. Wow. That's such a great thought. Isn't that a wonderful thought? It is. Yes. We, we have such good news. I, I, I'm doing, I told the guys this last night, but I'm doing a, a daily TV program on the Internet. It's Internet TV. But, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a daily program. If you want to watch it, it's 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. every weekday on gospeltruth.tv. But as I got into that, I'm more aware of, and, and, and the title of my program is Good News, as opposed to Bad News. You ever seen any bad news? <laughs> I got so tired of bad news that I thought, you know what? I'm going to give people good news, the good news, lots of good news. Good news, it's so good, the bad news doesn't matter. If, if what Jesus did is true, then the bad news is not going to last. It's all going to change, and everything's going to get better. So I'm, I'm doing this, and I'm reading. I read this newspaper article, and it said that the Hallmark Channel is, is receiving record viewership right now. Millions of people are watching the Hallmark Channel. They're leaving the news. They're leaving the secular sitcoms, and they're going to Hallmark, they said, because people want, want to see people making right decisions, doing the right thing, and living happily ever after. And I thought... That's my program. Happily Ever After. We own Happily Ever After. I mean, this is not fantasy. This is real. We, we, we're really going to heaven. And God's really going to live in our midst. And he's really going to remake the earth and the universe and get rid of the devil. And Revelation 21 is kind of summing all this up. And if you go down to verse, let's just skip down to verse 3 said, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they'll be his people, and God will be with them and be their God. And God, verse 4, will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have what? Passed away. Passed away. So there's coming a time, and I'm not going to preach on this, but I, I like to. I have a message that I, I go to this and just spend the whole time on this because it's such a wonderful picture. But there's a time when, when, when there's not going to be any more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering, no more death, and God's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. Tears represent regrets. Do you know why God Almighty is going to be able to... Let's just think about that. God's going to wipe away every tear. First of all, He doesn't want our past to ruin our eternity. He wants us to enjoy heaven with Him. But the reason He can do it is not because we don't have a past. It's not, he's not saying, you know, it was pretty bad. And, and, you know, I've cried too over it, over your past. And, but just try to, you know, just try to forget it. It's mind over matter. That's not, that's not what he's doing. He's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes because Jesus did whatever needed to be done to remove it. In other words, if God wipes away your tears, there's no reason to cry. He's not saying, I want you to feel better. He's saying, there's nothing to cry about. Wow. Not because of what you've done, but because of what he did. Now, I've preached this for years, but lately, here's what happened. I realized Jesus already paid this price. Yeah. He's already made it possible for us to live with no regrets. This report here in Revelation is God's going to come to every individual Christian and say, Look, is there anything left in your life that sin has done? Is there anything left from the old life that you haven't fully applied my redemption to? I'm going to apply it now. Well, let's just do it ourselves today. Then when we get to that day, we can say, no, we haven't been crying for years. We already accepted what Jesus did, and we've been free from our past since our days on earth. It's already paid for. You can live with no regrets. It just takes a little bit of attention. You have to be proactive. 
What started this for me was that we're, we're just moving into a new season. And you don't have seasonal changes really often in your life. You know, when you, when you graduate high school or college, when you get married, those are seasonal changes in your life. And if you're in ministry, there are changes that you have. And, and I was going through this seasonal change, and I think the Lord just dealt with it because he got tired of me uh, looking back and telling him all the things that I didn't care for, you know, all the things that I was sorry for, all the things that created sadness and sorrow. Whenever you change seasons, the tendency is to reflect and say, well, I wish I'd have done that better. I mean, when you graduated high school, did you not look back and go, e, you know, I could have done a little more work. I could have applied myself a little more. I could have skipped a couple of friends that really took me down or wasted my... You know what I'm saying? It's natural to reflect when it's over and begin to think about what you could have done or should have done or would have done. Did you know there's no, there's no use in that? And you can continue doing that your whole life, and it's a waste. It's a waste of time and energy. It's a waste of your strength. It's not the will of God. You say, well, you don't know what I've done. I don't know what you've done, but you don't know what he did. We're not talking about what you did. We're talking about what he did and applying that to your past and allowing him to just take it away. You don't have enough reserves to carry the faults and failures of your life on your shoulders, on your shirt sleeves. You need to let it go. Yes. That's good. Because you have a future. Yeah. If we didn't have a future, then fine. Sit in that pool of self-pity and just sit there and whine away. But if you want to do something for God, and that's what he was telling me, I, I don't have time for you to sit and look back and feel sad. It's time for you to deal with it and move on. Yeah, so the title of the series is Living With No Regrets. Get ready for the future by getting over the past. And I believe we're right there. I'm right there. It's time for us to get ready for our future by getting over the past. You can't go forward if you're looking back. That makes sense, doesn't it? And the enemy wants you to look back. That's pretty simple, isn't it? He wants you to look back and go, mm, oh, ew, ew, oh, oh, ew. And that's really what I was doing in my, in my prayer time. And uh, I heard this statement. You know, I was reading a book. Sometimes I get out my old Kenneth Hagin books and read them, and I was reading Right and Wrong Thinking. What a powerful book. And he said in that book, it, it, I mean, it just hit me because I was right there. Somebody came up to, to the front to pray with him. He prayed with them, prayed the prayer of agreement, and he, said, he made this statement. He said, I knew they didn't get their answer because I could still hear the whine in their voice. And boy, that convicted me. I thought, ooh, that's what I, I've had a whine in my voice. I've had a whine in my voice. I've been, I'm a faith preacher, and I was whining about Because, I, I mean, it really did happen, and I really could have done better, and I really shouldn't have done this, and I really should have done that, and it was all true, but it's a whine, and you've got to get rid of it. You've got to get the whine out of your voice. We don't have time for that. We need to let it go. Move on. Accept what Jesus did and apply it to your own past. Either he did or didn't forgive you. He either forgave you of everything or he didn't forgive you of anything. I, I vote for the former. It's, it's funny how we get selective about what we allow him to forgive us. You say, well, yeah, but, but I knew it was wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but, but I, I'm a, I was a Christian, and I knew better, and I did it anyway, and I knew I shouldn't have. Yeah, that's sin. That's exactly what sin is. Yeah, but it hurt other people. Mm -hmm, so did Adam's sin. That's exactly what you're, you're describing sin, and that's why Jesus came. Did he do what he came to do or not? Did he do it for everybody but you? And if he did it for you, then apply it to you. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore we also are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lie, lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us. So there are things in our lives that are weights. There are things that are sins. But they all weigh us down. 
And he says, lay them aside. And I think this is what this is, is laying aside sadness and sorrow. Laying aside these things so that we can run with endurance the race that is set before us. How many of you want to do that? Now, I'll admit, this message appeals more to older people than it does to younger people. <laughs> but I'm not sure I'm in the younger category anymore, so I have to preach what I have. <laughs> Isaiah 53, 4 says this, He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He took our sorrows. Why? So we don't have to take them. Sorrow is, is pain, whether it's physical or mental, it's, it's sorrow, pain, regret. Since I've gotten this, whatever, revelation, I just feel like I'm on a mission to drive out regret and sadness and sorrow and grief and mourning and pain. Drive it out. I have faith to do it. I know that it's the will of God. And I know we have the word on our side. And I know that if you'll act on this word, because I did. I did it. I took these scriptures. In fact, these scripture cards are back there. If you sign up on our mailing list, we'll give you these. But these scripture cards are full of scriptures that apply to these different areas of life. And you can go to your prayer room and begin to quote the word of God. And by the time you get done, you, you'll drive sorrow and sadness right out of your life. You drive out regret with the truth. It's not mind over matter. We're just replacing those old thoughts with some new thoughts, with the truth of God's Word. And the Bible's filled with truths to set you free from, from your past, from sadness and sorrow. And, and it will work. Let me give you an example of that. I've got several that I use, but uh, I love this stretch of Scripture, Ephesians 1, verses 4 through 7. I'll read it quickly and then show you how I confess this in my prayer room. It says, He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the Beloved, in which in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. So I say it like this. I am blessed, chosen, blameless, adopted, accepted, redeemed, and forgiven. You say that about ten times, and there's no room for sadness. These things are true about you. You don't have to go around sad. You don't have to go around melancholy or whatever it is you think you are. You can be happy. Amen. Sometimes the best thing we can do for God is to be happy and to, is to act like the Bible's true. And then, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I love Romans 8, 11, where it says, uh, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. Yes. I'm not going to be sad, sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to walk around with regret. God's spirit lives in me, and he's not sad and sorry. He doesn't look at us. Some people have the idea that every time they go to God, he's like this. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you had so much potential. Mm. Mm. I don't know. No, I'm not even going to talk to you today. Just, 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 just come back later. Did you know God doesn't think that or feel that, and he's made arrangements so that you don't have to either? We got to get that thinking out of our head because it's limiting our future. God wants us to be ready for the future. He wants us to be free from the past. Don't let thoughts and memories from your past hold you hostage. And, and, and tr Satan wants to build a case against you. He wants to take events from your past and say this and this and this. Prove that you are an idiot. <laughs> that you are a failure. That you are a loser. That you ought to be sad. And if you give in to that, guess what? You'll be sad. Yeah. The devil, he's a master negotiator. 
He starts out like he would love it if you never got saved and you went to hell. That would just make him happy. But you got saved. So that's, that, he lost that one. But he doesn't quit. You know, the next step is, you know what? You're a terrible Christian. You should kill yourself. Just, just kill yourself and get it over with. And you go, I resist you, Satan. So what's he going to do? He'll come back. He's not, a, he's not a mugger. He can't just overcome you, but he'll try to seduce you and come subtly. And he'll, he won't quit until you, until you agree on something. Yeah. So you're not going to kill yourself. No, I'm not going to kill myself. Okay, you ought to be depressed then, because, I mean, after all, look what you've done. You should at <laughs> least be depressed. Nope, I'm not going to be depressed. How about melancholy? Well, now you could... I should, I should be melancholy. In fact, I did a personality test and I am melancholy so what's wrong with you I'm just a little blue why well have you not read the news have you seen <laughs> he, he'll, he'll keep trying until you give in to something so don't give in just say no I'm free, I'm happy, I'm forgiven, I'm blessed, chosen, accepted, adopted, redeemed, forgiven. I'm not going to give in to that. Another, another thing you'll do is, is uh, you're, you're, you're lonely. <laughs> you know, you've always been around people and now you're by yourself. You ought to be lonely. And you go, mm, yeah, I am. I'm lonely. Why? Because I'm alone. <laughs> you don't have to be lonely just because you're alone. That's right. That's right. Keep the spirit out. Say, no, I'm happy. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> some people are happier alone. <laughs> I always tell single people, celebrate being single until you get married. Then celebrate being married. You can wish your whole life away. Wish I was married, wish I was married, wish I was married. Ooh, wish I wasn't married, wish I wasn't married. <laughs> you know, and you do that with age. I wish I was older, I wish I was older, I wish I was older. And then all of a sudden, I'm too old, I'm just too old. I wish I wasn't so old. Why live that way? Listen, we've got now until Jesus comes to live our lives. Let's get free from all those head games. Let's take the word and get happy. I'm here. So I've got some areas that I can apply this to that I believe will help you. <laughs> and we don't have time to get in. I'll, I'll give you the areas. Number one, missed opportunities. That can create a lot of, a lot of uh, anxiety, sadness, regret, missed opportunities. We'll go over some of those. Past sins. Past sins. My past sins are worse than yours. I don't care. <laughs> don't care. He came to forgive us of all sin. Amen. Now, if you need to repent, repent. If you want to go live like the devil, this message is not for you. We got another message for that. <laughs> but if you're trying to your best, you, you want to get out of the past. If you want to do, be happy again and be whole, this is for you. Past sins cre cause shame and guilt and that's not the will of God for you alright I got another one broken relationships <laughs> broken relationships I get into this much more in depth but let me just say it this way I'm not going to tell you how to win friends and influence people there's a lot of material on that I'm going to tell you how to lose them. But you don't hear much about that. But you better learn because you're going to have to do it. So I was going to title it, Get Hurt, Get Over It, Repeat. <laughs> Why? Because it happens. Yeah. Might as well be honest about it. Yeah. Number four, the loss of a loved one. That would be... Uh, somebody passes away. And I, I'm going to go back to the first section, but let me just say this about this one. My, I was driving around with my grandfather. This was years ago. He's passed on now, but he lived into his 90s, and we were driving through his small town where he grew up. 
And I was young, a lot younger than I am now, and we're driving by the cemetery just on our way somewhere. And he looked out at the cemetery, and he said, he was a happy guy. He, he wasn't complaining. He just said it. Matter of fact, he said, I got more friends in the cemetery than I do in town. <laughs> wow, I never really thought of life like that before. But he was right. And the longer you live, the more you're going to have to go through this losing people. And it's difficult. And, and, and all of these areas, there's four of them that I cover. There's probably many more. I'm not a psychiatrist. I literally got this message like that. Like it was a lightning bolt. And I thought, oh, wow. And so I got these four areas. And that's what I do. Since I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm just a preacher. So I'm just preaching on these areas. And it kind of covers a lot of territory. But, but uh, losing a loved one is something that God never intended us to do. He, he never wanted us to go through death and separation. That was not his plan. So when you do lose a loved one, don't blame it on God. Are you with me? That's good. That'll help you on the other side of it because you've got to deal with it. And your loved one would not want you to live your entire life that you have left sad and mourning over their departure. So we shift it and we say, rather than be sad about them leaving, I want to celebrate our reunion because that's what's happening. That's what's going to happen. We're going to see them again. Amen. Amen. We're going to see them again. And one of the things that helped me, and I'm not going to preach this, but one of the things that helped me more than any is this one. Every time I saw, uh, I've read a testimony of somebody who's been to heaven and come back, because some of them have. How many of you knew that? They all had one thing in common. All of them struggled to describe heaven. They all struggled to put it into words, and they all said that. But, but the ones that I've read, they all said the same thing. I didn't want to come back. Well, my, I, you know, I, that was made me all happy till my dad died. <laughs> and then it's like, <sighs> and you miss him. And, it, and then you realize, if he had an opportunity to come back, he'd say no. <laughs> he doesn't want to come back. And that just helped me immeasurably. He doesn't want to come back. Well, if he don't want to come back, I'm not going to sit down here and wring my hands over it. I'm just going to get ready to meet him. At some point, you're not really grieving over them. You're grieving over you. Missed opportunities. Let's go back where I won't get in trouble. Missed opportunities. Everybody's got missed opportunities. I don't care who you are. And missed opportunities are, I could have done this. I should have done this. I would have done this. If I could go back and do it over, I'd do this. Think about this. We could have bought Apple stocks. <laughs> I had an iPhone, and I loved it, and I didn't buy Apple stocks. What was I thinking? They built a Walmart two blocks from my house when I was a kid, and I thought, it'll never go. It's too big. I should have bought Walmart stocks. I could have been rich. I could have been rich right now. But I didn't. So what are you going to do? How long do you regret the fact that you didn't buy Apple stock? And I know that's just a silly illustration, but everything that you didn't do falls into that category. There are people that are so focused on their past, they can't get on with life. You know, I should have gone out for the NFL. <laughs> I had potential. You ever heard that one? I could have been a pro ball player. You know what? Probably not, but w whatever. Sometimes we romanticize it oh, above and beyond. You would have probably gone out and gotten cut. And maybe ended up on Skid Row and never recovered. Who knows what would have... It's so easy to go live your life that way. It's not, a, it's not necessary. You didn't get over it. Well, you know, you can be anything you want to be. No, you can't. That's an American statement. It's not a scriptural statement. The truth is you can be anything God wants you to be. 
And here's a further truth, and you can start right now. You don't, you're not a has-been, a would-have-been, a should-have-been. You can start right now and be what God wants you to be Amen. till the end of your life. God has the uncanny ability to make up the years that you've wasted. Amen. That's good. God knew you were going to miss opportunities. He knew you were going to waste time. He knew you were going to make wrong steps. But He loved you, and He has a plan for you anyway. That's good. And you can still have it. It's the enemy that wants you to look back and say, things will never be the same because I missed this or missed that. Forget that thinking. You got one life. Let's live it for God. Let's start today. Why not? Let God, Joel 2, restore the years that the canker worm has stolen. Let God make up years. I say it this way. God can do more with your future than you could if you could go live your past again. Why? Because that's the kind of God he is, and he's already factored all this in. Get with the program. My motive for sharing this is I believe that God's not done with this generation and with this nation. And he needs an army of people to rise up that are free from the past, that aren't sorry, they're not sad, they're not mad, they're not angry, they don't, they're not filled with regret. They're just free to follow God and do what God's called them to do and reach this generation. They are waiting for us to get our act together. And, and they aren't concerned with your past, and neither is God. Can you say amen? amen? You made it this far. You must have done something right. You know what I mean? Here we are. Surely we're not that bad. We, we're still going. You still love God, don't you? You still believe the Bible. You came to church. If you listen to the devil, you're just worthless and you can't do anything, never will. But you came to church, you love God, you're still breathing, you belong on earth. You, God says, I can take that and make something of it if, if you'll let me. You know, we talk about he's the God of the second chance, and he is. The question is, will you give him a second chance? Yeah. He's waiting on some people to give him another chance because they've already disqualified themselves and they're ready to make the case. Or here's why God can't use me. Here's why I can't do anything. Here's why I'll never make it. Yeah. You need to let that go. Yeah. People are saying, you know, I wish I'd have had kids. It's too late now. I can't have kids. I'm 60 years old. I wish I'd have had kids. I should have had kids. I should have w- wish I would have had kids. Well, you didn't. <laughs> so? And then you got the other people going, why did I have kids? We shouldn't have had kids. And we're so free. So happy. Do you understand what I mean? You can apply this to anything and regret it, and, and it can cost you. And there's no need for it. Jesus died to set us free from sadness and sorrow. You can be happy like you never did anything wrong. Isn't that great? Free as a baby. Say, how do you know? Because I did it. I've been, I've been going to my prayer room and just taking the word out and just, just get happy. Say, well, what are you going to do? I don't know, but I'm going to be happy. Has your life changed in any way? I don't know, but I'm, I'm happy now. I'm free. I'm not looking back going, well, I got the wine out of my voice. <laughs> now when those things come back, because they do, you just go, nope, I don't, I'm not doing that. I don't have to do that. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm free. I'm moving forward. I don't have time for you. That's for country music stars. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I love to listen to those songs. I need to do it more often and write down the lyrics because they're just, they're comedic. And I, one of them said, you know, he's singing, and then they have such a sad draw. Of course, this is Austin, so I'm, I'm treading on holy ground. <laughs> I told an Aggie joke one time in an Aggie community, and that didn't go over. So anyhow, I don't care. Uh, but this guy, he, he's a country singer. He says, I'm not broke, but I'm badly bent. <laughs> If you want to get into all that, you could just, there's no end to the sadness and sorrow that you could manufacture over your past. But that, there's no future in that. Let's let it go. 
Let's just get over it. Let's apply the word. And once you begin to apply the word, it doesn't happen automatically. But you take these scripture cards and begin to speak them over your life and begin to allow that to displace the sadness. And it will. And then, and then you'll realize, hey, I'm, I'm free. And then when it comes back, you go, nope, I'm not doing that. I'm chosen. I'm accepted. I'm adopted. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. I'm moving forward. I do have a past, but Jesus forgave me. He wiped it all away. And I'm going to live like he did what he said he did Amen. makes life more fun. Amen. Psalm 103, verse 13, I read this one last night to the men. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. He knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. What does that mean? God knew you weren't going to be perfect. Seems like, you know, we all knew you weren't going to be perfect. Seems like maybe you're the only one that figured that out. You missed it, so what? You, you missed opportunity, so what? God knows our frame. He understands what we're dealing with, how we live life, and he's okay with that as long as you let it go. Some people just need permission to let it go. Some people need permission to let relationships go. And I don't have time to get into it, but listen, there will be relationships that come and go in your life, and you're just going to have to let them go. The ones that are, it's time to go, let them go. So, is that the will of God? Sometimes it is. And you know what? You'll be in heaven, and you can work it all out then. I was in a, in a, in a situation years and years ago where I was moving from one season to another. And I was going through the same thing. And I was just looking at, I didn't realize, sometimes you don't realize what's actually happening in a season in your life till it's over. Kind of like high school. <laughs> you know, you just don't quite figure it out till it's over. And you go, wow, you mean that was like supposed to be an education. I kind of <laughs> missed that. I thought it was about friends and whatever. I, I forgot the education part. You, 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 sometimes it's not as clear until it's over. And, and I was doing that. I was moving on in a different transition in my life. And, and as I look back, I did the same thing. I thought, oh, Lord, I didn't know this season was going to be so short. And I could have done so much better. And I didn't realize it. And I, I wish I hadn't done that. And I wish I had done better here. And I was doing that in my prayer time. And the Lord just stopped me. And he gave me this, this illustration. He, he said, he said, you need to view this last three years. That season in my life was three years. He said, you need to view it as like a college education. And he said, every relationship that you had is like a different class during that education process, a different course. And he said, some of them you did really good in. Others, you didn't do so good. But you passed. You got your diploma. You're not a straight A student, but you got your diploma. He said, you should have no more regret or resentment toward any person in this season of your life than you would toward a college professor that taught a really tough course that you passed by the skin of your teeth. It's like no hard feelings. I got my diploma. I am out of here. I got what I needed from this experience. I will see you later. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying you're here. You must have done something right. You've made it this far. You've passed some things. You're not, you're not uh, uh, irretrievable, unusable, or you wouldn't be here. So, so if you're here and you've been through things, look, you've got some diplomas under your belt. So you're not a straight-A student. And maybe you may need to take a course over, but that's not a problem. God can do that. But it's time to move on. Take your diploma and move on with no regrets. Who's going to have a regret if they graduate college and get their degree and move on to the next season? Why, why, why agonize over some class that you didn't do so well in? Get on with it. You ever been to the doctor? You been to a doctor? You go into a doctor's office. You know what he has on the wall? Almost. Where do they get these? <laughs> like multiple diplomas. In every office, they got their diploma on their wall. They're proud of it. What does that mean? It means 
they passed. Now, you know what they don't have on their wall? Their grade transcript. <laughs> that would be interesting, would it not? I would like to see that. I want to see every grade from every class they've ever taken, and then I want to decide if I want to use Well, you will never see that. Why? Because they pass the minimum requirements to begin to practice on you to be your doctor. <laughs> and the state and everybody says they did it. They don't tell how they did it or how well they did it, but they did it. Well, I believe we did it. We're here because we, we, we made it. Let's move forward. Amen. Let's go forward. Quit looking back. You got your grade. Be happy. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Many times God's wanting to throw a celebration and we're trying to mourn and grieve over something that he doesn't even remember anymore. Gosh, I could, say, I could say so much. Let me just say this. Remember the story of the prodigal son? I love that story. Luke chapter 15. The son went off and took his father's inheritance, which, you know, there's a lot of problems I have with the whole story. Can you imagine this little snot-nosed kid going, Dad, I want to leave home. I don't like you very much, but I do want my inheritance. Could you just go ahead and write me that check before I leave and slam the door in your face. And the father says, sure, son, here you go. It's like, wait just a minute. <laughs> that's not how my dad would have, that's not how that would have gone. <laughs> but he gave him his inheritance, and he goes off, and he wasted it. He just blew it. And then the Bible says he came to himself in a pig pen. That, that's a good place to come to yourself. He's in a pig pen, and he's, he's starving to death because he's not making enough to, to eat. And he, and, and he came to himself, and he said, My father's servants have it better than this. I'm going to go back home, and I'm going to repent, and I'm going to be sorry, and I'm going to mourn, and I'm going to tell my dad how sorry I am for what I've done. And maybe he will give me an entry-level job at the family farm because they eat better than this. They live better than this. So he had all this plan, and he's going back to the father, and he's going over this speech in his head, and I'm going to tell him I did this. I'm so sorry about that, and I wish I hadn't done that. And he's got all this going, and the father sees him coming, and the father runs to meet him. Isn't that a beautiful picture? The Bible says the father saw him a great way off. Why? He never quit looking. He was waiting every day for the son to come home. And one day the son decided, I'm just going to go home. And what happens next is, 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 it's like two people on two different wavelengths. They're like completely, uh, what do you, tone deaf to each other. So the son starts with his pitiful speech. I did this, and I'm so sorry, and I'm not even worthy to be good. I, sh I wasted money. I could have gotten an education. I could have got a business. I could have done, and I, I could have saved it. I could have put it in a CD, but I just wasted it. And, he could, and he's going on and on, and the father is steadily putting a robe on him, putting a ring on him, saying, kill the fatted calf, get the musicians. We are going to have a party, and that's like they're not even paying any attention to each other. And, and, and that's what I get right now. In many cases, God is so excited that we're ready to move forward, and he's wanting to celebrate, and yet we're ruining our own party. We're sitting there going, and I did that, and I did this, and I did... It's not normal. It's not like a normal father. I mean, in a normal situation, the son comes home, the father says, sit down there, boy. Now, you tell me where you've been and what you've been doing. And tell me this. Have you learned anything from this experience? And do you promise that you're not going to do that again? And on and on and on. But that's not how it went. That's what the son may have expected, but that's not what he got. What he got was this, my son was dead, and now he's alive. In other words, future. We're going forward. This is what I always wanted, and we're going to do something. And the son was like, and I did that, and I did. He's looking back. He's not going to be any, of any use until he gets done with all that and decides, okay, now, here we are, and here's where we're going. That's what God wants from us. You know what amazes me? 
is he didn't tell the son to sit down and tell me everything you've done wrong. He didn't even care. It wasn't even on the list. It's like, you want to be home? That's all I needed to know. I got plenty of plans. I got plenty of money. I got the future's ours. All you got to do is let go of the past. And that's true for you too. Amen? Did you get anything out of that? I just finished a book on it. I wish I had it, but it'll be out later. But um, I, I just believe it's going gonna, it's gonna to touch people and help people get free. God doesn't want us holding on to those, those memories. Now listen, he won't, he won't delete these memories. He's not going to come in and brainwash you. But he can take the pain out. He can remove the pain from the past. And he could fill you with gladness. The Bible says, I didn't read it in Psalms, he'll turn your mourning into dancing. I mean, that is quite a change, isn't it? Mourning into dancing. He didn't say, I'll t- turn your mourning into just plain depression. <laughs> you know, you won't be quite, I'll take the tears away and you can just be depressed for a while. No, he didn't say, I'm going to try to make you normal again. He said, I'm going to turn your mourning into dancing. I'm going to give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Only God can do that. But he can. Aren't you glad? Would you stand with me?